All right, I said I would show my, uh, it's actually, it's called the Hot Rod um, AC water heater. So you can do a conversion to your LP tank. That's my brand new six gallon Suburban tank I just bought. And what you're gonna need to do, is you're gonna need a, a one and 16th inch socket and a ratchet. And you wanna come down here and loosen this anode, which I've pre-loosened. We'll remove that. That's what that looks like. That's just sacrificial metal. Looks like aluminum. Inside you get uh, a thermostat, the heating element, the cord, all up in the box. There's your heating element. As you can see, the threads are different. Comes with two adapters. This one here is supposed to be for the Suburban. And yes, it is. You're also going to need some Teflon tape. Put on these threads. Snug this up. Then you're going to install the heating element, which is. Uh, this guy right here comes with plenty of wire. You just take your adapter after you seat it in the tank, tighten it up, push this in, and it screws in like you would expect. And again, some Teflon tape. And then it comes with a cord, eight feet of cord. This is for the back of the thermostat. This is the thermostat here. This attaches to the back side of the water tank. I'll show you that as I move along. So right now I'm gonna prep this and uh, get this, the heating element installed. And again, that's the hot rod, six gallon, uh, 110 AC water heating element for the Suburban, six gallon water, hot water tank for your RV. And they make one for a 10 gallon tank as well, it's 675 watts. Obviously, I will run this off solar during the day once my batteries are floating. I'll just turn the water heater on and forget about it until I need to turn it off. Don't have to burn up AC. All right, I'll be back shortly. All right, I've taken the time to uh, put some Teflon tape on the bushing. Okay. And I've taken some Teflon tape trying to be careful not to get it on the heating element and you want to wrap your tape the way your threads go to keep the tape on and another little point of interest I showed the uh, new anode rod up a moment ago there's the new one there's the old one out of the leaky water tank completely done all right be back in a second Okay, <clears throat> I've got the reducer bushing in, and obviously it came from China, so the closest thing I had was a 1 and 3 16 socket, which fit it quite nicely. I'm going to put the anode of the water heater in next, and this is the inch and 16th, like the original anode. It just screws right in nice and easy. put it in snug and they tell you not to go more than I think two and three quarters turns and then the, uh, the little plug clips on and I have to the next move is cut a hole in the foam insulation on the back to put on the thermostat so I'll be back in a minute all right one more step I didn't show was uh, you're gonna also need to drill a hole over in the top corner here it's a good place for it is your cord is going to have to plug in down here and it's going to have to get fed through this hole and after you do that it comes with this little piece of sheathing they want you to silicone it in so you don't cut the wire and this goes around back to the thermostat so you do have to drill one hole I started out with an eighth inch and went up to a half inch I'm sure you know how to drill a hole all right I got my hole cut 
I actually cut the hole a little bit too big, but I managed to save this piece. So it has to be a flat spot on the tank, and this tank's got a bevel here, so I have to move it over. And this kit pretty much comes with everything, a little uh, alcohol swab, which is nice. I'm going to wipe this down. Actually, a very small flat spot on this tank. Let that dry. There's a little bit of oil on it. How fast that's going to dry, I don't know. It's going to get cool here. Then it comes pre taped. Just pull your tape off. Stick this thing on. There's no flat area here, apparently. Alright, i got to redo this. not sticking. Alright, what I've done is uh, I cleaned the back of the tank with some lacquer thinner on a rag really good. And I wiped the adhesive label on the back with some lacquer thinner, which softened it up a bit. And i got to tell you, there's not much uh, flat area back here, but I do have it on. And it says to uh, put some silicone around the edges to help stick it on there. Now for me, I'm going to be able to go in through my shower stall. There's a little door, and this is right on the other side of the door, so I can get to this to adjust the temperature if I want. That's your manual reset button. Your blue wire goes to the blue stripe. And the red wire goes here, white to white, green to green. Pretty simple. And then it has a cover, which I guess goes like that. So if you can get to your back side of your water heater, or the side of your water heater, depending on your install, it's really not that difficult. Uh, i got to do some repair work on the camper, which is why I just showed this install out here on the floor, because it was easier to demonstrate. So anyway, that's the uh, conversion over to uh, AC from LP gas, or if you want a lot of hot water, you can run your uh, AC uh, element and turn the propane on too at the same time. So I gotta do some repair work like I said I'm gonna run this cord to the I think to the outside box where the inverter plugs in and then I'm gonna have it so it can also come up under the sink and go into another plug if I'm plugged in the shore power if I want to use AC. So there you have it. There's the uh, hot rod electric conversion for the propane tank. And the whole deal including filming this might have took an hour of my time and uh, was not was pretty straightforward. As far as the heating element coming in from the front, when you open your door, you can get to that. But you will need to be able to get through this to the back side of your water heater. Hopefully you got room to do that. All right, that's it. That's the conversion. Thanks for watching.